just a bloke in a bar. What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to another episode of Bloke in a Bar. Before we get into it, November the 16th. That's right. Next Thursday, we are doing 50% off everything on bloke.shop. That is right. 50% off everything. We've got brand new designs in shirts, singlets, jumpers, plus we've got, all, we've got DMP shirts still up there. We've even got some footy jerseys left, plus a bunch more. We've got bloke thongs. We've got everything you could want. It is 50% off absolutely everything. 6 p.m. November 16th. Thursday, uh, once it's all gone, it's gone. So if you've got to get in there, get in there early. Um, and you guys know we don't do 50% off often. So 50% off next Thursday, 6 p.m. Be there. Now, let's get straight into it, shall we? We've got the big fella, Josh Reynolds here. How you going, brother? Mate, I'm great. Mate, you're in media now. Oh, I don't know about that. You're, I'm, yeah, I'm, mate, you're I'm a journalist, pretty much. I'm following my way in there. Don't call me a journalist. <laughs> <laughs> That's too far, man. Come on. Oh. Well, mate, it's been a long time, hasn't it? 2016. Mate, 2016. Back in your just starting. Just starting. And Shire. you would have had. So what I would do is, is I was still working then. I would, I would have been working in the coal terminal in Port Kembla. I would finish work, pack everything in the cart. There's that bag over there is where I would pack the, you know, you probably don't remember, but there was these green, uh, sorry, gray material walls that I would Velcro to the steel frame so that it looked like on camera that you would come to my studio, but really we had gone to <laughs> the Cronulla. Yeah. Um, I forgot what it's called now, but it's just on the, it used to be just it, on the corner there. Is it the Novotel? I th yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. definitely not in all these, I'm not allowed in there. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so, yeah, that was eight, eight what, that since 16? Yeah, eight years ago. Seven that's or actually, eight years ago. That's a long time. Mate, my Holy. hairline was back there then. <laughs> Thank God for Turkey. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, uh, how are you feeling? Like, you know, you're free, but you're, also, you're, still in it, you're still in the game, but you're free from the beast. I'll tell you one thing I am absolutely stoked about. So I'm still in the WhatsApp group for the boys, just holding on. Yeah. To still be a bit of a, you know, have that little player uh, feeling. Yeah. But when they're talking about going back to preseason next week, God, I'm not going to miss that. Mate, the head noise I used to get <laughs> heading into preseason. Well, I get, this is when I used to honestly be probably my most nervous. Yeah. One or two weeks out. And... Back in the, like when I first sort of started out, I'd always take pride in like going hard at preseason and mm. trying to like win everything. So like, I always felt that little bit of added pressure. Yeah. And the boys would, I, I used to hate when the boys would be like, oh, you love it. I'm like, no, I don't love it. Trust me. I feel exactly the same as you. Yeah, Probably yeah. not the same as some of the, the, big <laughs> the boys been on the darts and stuff all <laughs> yeah. preseason. But yeah, so, and I just remember like thinking, I've got to go hard in this first yo-yo. Yeah. I've got to. And all the boys would be like, mate, never go hard in the first one. Yeah. I'd always have it in my head, maybe I'd maybe think, but then I'd get out there and, yeah, good times not to have to do that, mate. Mate, you know, it's crazy as I had the exact same because that was one of my biggest weapons in preseason was to win fitness because I'm not the biggest, mm -hmm. I'm not the strongest, but I can get a leg up for the round one trial if I win every fitness drill. Yep. And sometimes when you're feeling lazy and sorry for yourself, you're on the, you're driving on the way and you just alluded to it. You're driving on the way to preseason, you've, you've probably had – in really good first two weeks you've won everything and you say to yourself you know what i'm just gonna cruise because this is before heart rate monitors i don't know if they they might have just come in for you I, I you know what i reckon my first couple of years maybe my first two i might have missed them yeah so you can, you could just kind of like if you're in the front you're mm. all good whereas nowadays they watch your heart rate so they go mate you fucking even if you're winning and you're not going <laughs> yeah. well they'll rock, rock you yeah um, and you'd be driving in going, all right, I'm just going to cruise this one. I'll still be towards the top, but... And then as soon as you got out there, the, you just feel that energy of like, nah, I can't, I can't. And you just go hard from the yeah, start. Yeah, I think I still got PTSD from that, the yo-yo, the voice. Oh, start the Start level one, one. Oh, and that, yuck. and the, the trundle wheel clicker. When oh. I see Tony, Tony Grimaldi with that in his hand, I knew he meant business. Yep. <laughs> yeah. What about when you'd rock up to training, you'd look at the markers to see where the markers were lined up to know what you were doing? So if they were lined up a certain way, it was 1.2. Mm. Oh, this looks like offside touch. And you just get in your head going, oh, what, just what you praying for offside touch, please. <laughs> yes. And like, because this was before, like, I think it might have been around 2010. I'm not sure when, when you were coming through. But initially, you didn't used to get programs. You used to essentially just like, this is, you got, you got as in programs, you got of like, this is where you've got to be. So it'll say like 8.30 fitness. Whereas I think now if you've got essentially exactly what you're doing on each day yep. for the amount of time, mm -hmm. back then it was pretty much like you rock up at like 6.30, be ready for a seven start. 
and then it'll say field session for fucking three yeah, hours. And just field. Just, just getting flogged. Just no breakdown. Yep. No, I, I honestly used to hate that. Yep. I, I actually liked knowing what I got. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't the fact that, like, yeah. but you just like, you just know, all right, well, I've done that bit. Mm. We've got another block. And then you, but yeah, it's it's honestly something that I will not miss. Oh. I'll miss the game. I love it. I, I, I've already, there was a, a bull, I put out a Bulldogs like a video the yesterday. Promo was so good. Yeah, and I honestly, that's the I think that's the first time since I've finished because really? ever since, yeah, I've been okay. I honestly have like yeah. just because I knew I, I struggled. I really did this year, um, and I knew when I got to that point, the last six seven games, I didn't feel anything. And then, but now when I seen that, and a couple of those clips, I was like, oh, damn, yeah. I'm gonna really miss that. Yeah. But at the same time, I won't miss the other side oh, of it. Oh man, so. I, it's. You know, obviously, I had nowhere near the career that you did, but it's for me, it's the big games. It's that seeing like a pack Suncorp going, fuck, imagine being with the locker room with the boys and we're all just looking at each other, fucking eyes rolling in the back of our head, ready to go. <laughs> That's what I fucking miss, you oh, know? Oh, mate. Just going, we're about to go. Let's fucking go, boys. It's that feeling. I, I don't know what it is. I don't know how to ex- ex- explain that feeling, like, a, like whether it's joy, excitement, nerves. Mm. Like, it's, it's funny because you think about it and you're like, mate, this is a big occasion. Yeah. Like you, you, you can't stuff up here. Mm. You can't, but you, when you're young, you, you embrace it. Yeah. yeah. I, I just remember like, you speak about Suncorp, like people would be like, fuck, they hate you. eh?" <laughs> like, but for some reason, the more, I just loved it. Loved it. And I just want to have good games up there. And I, I just want to really, I don't know, I suppose take it on. Yeah. And that's, that's the one thing I will miss. Like yeah. I, I'm playing Oztag on Mondays now. <laughs> And that, that doesn't come anywhere near. Maybe we should hire some <laughs> Queenslanders to come down and heckle you. <laughs> yeah, You'll that's, probably win that's fucking a good idea, actually. Every fucking game. <laughs> <laughs> um, mate, so this year, obviously, you know, you, you pulled up stumps, but as a, you know, an incredibly proud Bulldog man, first I would love to hear about, actually, we'll, we'll go specifically into the Bulldogs as a whole. What was it like? Because it was a tough year for the Bulldogs. It started really well. It looks like, wow, look, they've got a really hard edge defence. Everything's going great. And then obviously towards the end of the year, um, you struggled a little bit, well, struggled quite a lot. As a, you know, a player that is so in love with the club, how hard was that to see? Yeah, it's hard, mate. Mm. I'm not going to shy away from that. Like, and, and it hurt me because I was like, I can't, like I'm doing my best to try and help, but I, I, I couldn't. Like I mm. just, yeah, I couldn't at the moment. Mm. There, was a, there was so much going on. And as you said, we... We weren't getting it right mm. and it was like yeah it, it actually was like when i sometimes during my career when i tried too hard it mm. come off the, it come the wrong way mm. you know I, I stepped the line over the line and i felt a lot like that sometimes it was just like man, I, I just i want this club to get back what i i said to the boys like you know i, I had a good relationship with zero and i didn't want to be that guy that come back and was like Back in our day, yeah. I, I I never want to do that. Like it's mm. not about that, but I just wanted those that group core core group of boys to know, like the the feeling if if you're going well at the dogs, mm. there's no better feeling. Mm. Like when we were playing in the grand finals and and playing in the semis for all those constant years, yeah, we didn't win one, but at the same time, it was happy. It's a happy place. Yeah. The fa- the fans are the best in in the business when they love you. The club will look after you, and they'll look after your family. Mm. So it's not just you that's happy, it's your, your family, it's your partners, because they're a massive part of it, massive. you know. I just remember the days of going to training and, you know, we created a thing where all the partners and the kids would come to Captain's Run. Mm. And I just remember Clemens' little kids running across the field and I just, they're, they're my greatest memories. Yeah. And I just was like, I'd always try and tell those boys, like, how good it can be. Yeah. Um, and look, I hope I didn't overstep <laughs> the mark in being that guy. Yeah. But at the same time, I just, it was very hard to, even playing, Mm. Like because, you know, I'll be honest. I coming back, I thought, yeah, like you know, I could I could have a fair impact, hopefully on a game. Mm. But it's just so different now. And, yeah. Uh, you know, Sarah used. I feel he used me well. He mm. knew I probably wasn't up to starting every week, and yeah. it was good. It was really nice to be a part of Carl's journey. Mm. Um, you know, sort of blooding him in starting games and then him Olu coming Apu, on. Oh, up who? Sorry, yeah. 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 Um. So yeah, like it, it was hard, but. All I know is you got the right guy there in Ciro because mm. he's not he's not really from Belmore mm. um, or a, a anywhere near there. 
but he's trying so hard to understand the place. Yeah. It's a very different place oh, absolutely. To, to anywhere I've ever been. Yeah. And I've been to Hull. <laughs> that's, a, that's a different place in itself, man. Yeah, yeah. And obviously been to the Tigers, um, but there's no place like it. And I just that's what I love. He's really trying to embrace it. He's really trying to bring the fan, fans in and unite mm. every, everything. So I definitely know we're on the right path. But mm. yeah, this year probably, he'd probably say himself, it didn't go as good as he would have liked. Yeah. It's uh, it's you're right in regards to it. It's such a unique uh, fa- community and fan base as well. I do think that. I mean, all you got to do is go back and look at those videos from the grand final weeks that you had. You know, <laughs> it just they are so passionate, <laughs> and and also the way they express that passion is very different to other, um, I guess, fans, mm. which is cool. Which is a cool experience. But uh, what did you actually? We'll, we'll, We'll go. We'll get back to eventually you coming and playing again because it's just so incredible. Um, but what initially, just broad spe- broadly speaking, having gone away and then coming back with the game having changed quite a lot, rule changes. Now it's 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 veered a little bit back to what it was pre, I don't know, two thousand twenty one or whatever it was. But was it that much different, or do you think it's it's a little bit different, but not too different? Nah, it is. Yeah. It is, mate. The, the six against it. it ridiculous yeah like have you seen those so it's obviously the game's sped up i feel mm. uh, from when i when, when, it, when i left to hull um but obviously because i was playing in the halves mm. always have but then i was playing in the middle yeah okay. a, a, for, for the dogs so for me it was like triple speed yeah. <laughs> and i mean you know, i mean i'm 90 kilos <laughs> ringing wet mm. trying to play in the middle yeah and i just it was a complete washing machine for me mm. But take that away. Take, you know, there, there'll be guys who have played in the middle for their whole lives. I still think with the six again, how many times you could possibly have to defend your line, mm. um, momentum swings. I just feel this is why Penrith is so good mm. because they're just so good at turning people away, turning people away, in, like embracing that like pressure mm. and then being able to explode. Yeah. I just can't. And this is why... <clears throat> You know, speaking to Ciro about his time at Penrith, mm. they must just be so fit mm. because sometimes you see teams on the back uh, on the back foot, they defend and they defend and they defend, and they can hold you out for three sets. Mm. But then you see their next attacking set yeah. is very, you know, boring. Yeah, they don't really throw the ball around. Um, but then you just see Penrith; they're just like bang Fisher Harris, bang Leota, Nathan kick kick chase. They're back in the game. Yeah, it's just yeah, it's a. Uh, we well, watched the grand final, and. I've, I've said in the review on that, it was actually the first 20 minutes that won Penrith the grand final because they made Broncos defend their line literally for 20 minutes. And so the last 10 minutes, every Broncos player was out in their feet, whereas they're so – you're right, they're so fit, the Penrith Panthers. And, and that's, the, that's the difference in between teams, I think, mm. that where the Penrith, where Penrith are a class above. So Penrith had that much pressure on the Broncos. Mm. Any other team would have probably gone – we're not – this isn't happening for us today. Mm. It happens, mate. I know as a half, if yeah. I'm putting pressure on someone, pressure on someone, and they're not cracking. Yeah. Even though people say build pressure, build pressure, and don't get me wrong, that's all. That's what the game is about. Yeah. But I don't care what anyone says. There's still those thoughts that'd be like, we can't crack them. Yeah. And you know, then the Broncos grow a leg, and but Penrith don't care about that. Yeah. They obviously know that period, as you just said, is going to pay them back. Yeah. In the last twenty, mm. <laughs> as it did oh, man. in the final moments, and you know, one, <coughs> one no tie in. Loses you the game. Literally and one no time. That, that's, that's fatigue. Fatigue, man. Yeah. And that's just why they're just a class above. Yeah. Right. They're just, and when you look at their, also their injury rate, it's so low. Like I would love to know what changed physically for them four years ago. Like was it their programs? Because like no one's doing any magical program. Like there's, everyone's essentially doing mm. the same stuff. Same fitness, all the testing would be the same. But you're right, they just have this edge that and maybe it's all mental maybe it's just the mental game that they've gotten um so right but yeah their fitness is crazy crazy there's got to be some sort of like for me personally i i, I think the way just going from also so we, we we've i've sort of seen it firsthand mm. how Ciro tries to train the boys obviously he's, he's taking a lot of stuff from penrith and yeah. as, who wouldn't yeah absolutely he, he's seen it firsthand won three comps in a row yeah um but the intensity that they must train at but hold each other accountable at that yeah. is ridiculous. Yeah, okay. Like they must be, they're pushing it. Yeah, okay. They're the guys that are like chipping each other saying like, really, like you're going to do that? Mm. And, and that's where I think they, they might be a bit better than anyone else because it's hard, mate. Like 
it's hard to tell someone sometimes, mate, what are you doing? Yeah. But then the good teams, they do it, they have a crack at each other, but then they know it's all for the right reasons. Yeah. And that's healthy culture. Yeah. And that's, that's I don't know. It's hard to build for sure. I, I, I think they must have just yeah. an unbelievable. I, w- I will say that that was the one unique, uh, having gone to two different NRL clubs, been at the Broncos early 2000s or like, you know, 2005 till 2000 and, you know, whatever. Uh, they were ruthless like that. But the tough thing for other teams is like the Broncos could be ruthless like that because they was all internationals. Mm. So that's what they used to lean on a lot. Basically, if you're a young kid, you know, sooking or whatever, they would be like, mate, like I play for Australia and Queensland. Like, what the fuck are you doing? And that was a real, like a crutch for them almost to be able to go, this is a standard mm. and it's actually the standard across the entire of the NRL. So it's a great point. Like Penrith must be just really, and to, cause like people forget that when Ivan Cleary came back, they only had one origin player. Now they've got seven. Unbelievable. So to build into that, it's amazing. And it's just, like you just said, like, and it's a very cliche, next man up mentality, but any guy that puts that jersey on, yeah, like Luka Cogger this year, probably won him the grand final. <laughs> yeah, like I know, no, nah, he, he, like he won't get the raps for it, but he changed that game. Absolutely. You know, Nathan won it in the end and the clutch moment. <laughs> but Cogger was, I played against, you know, Cogger over in England two years ago for Huddersfield. Yeah. And... This is not like nothing on him, but like he, he was all watching him this year and he's a totally different player. Yeah. And he was controlling games. He was like GF kicking to corners in a GF. Yeah. He played a major part in an NRL grand final. Yeah. So it just screams the volumes yeah. of what they, what they breed in there yeah. in, in that, that team. Yeah. And like, like you said, we all train the same. Yeah. It's just, it's got to be something. It's got to be a bit mental. It's got to be being able to, tell him that you're not doing the right thing mm. and as you, you're right there's seven origin players there now probably how many test players oh mate like they'd be the whole team. i think there was i don't know when it was but there was maybe last year there was like 17 because there was guys playing for samoa yeah. there's like, you know what i mean so yeah unbelievable yeah uh mate uh obviously you grew up in sydney born what, what suburb were you born in exactly because we, uh, we've got a we've got a wiki that we need to yeah we've got a wiki area I don't have me wikis right <laughs> someone's played played a bit of wiki because games playing wiki games because it actually says reynolds played for the illawarra steelers <laughs> so i just want to get i just want to clear the air with the people yeah look the only thing i probably liked about the steelers was trent barrett i loved him <laughs> he's an unbelievable player but no i didn't play for the illawarra steelers so i played my junior footy club in the canterbury comp mm. was called the st george dragons mm. so i think people have just gone okay so he he must have played for the dragons because yeah. i might, maybe they googled and i didn't come up in the st george dragons tower maps yeah, or something okay. then they've gone oh it must be steelers so yeah here it is i was <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a bulldogs junior barry ward was my um put the harold match coach put the pitchforks away guys that's it he's not that's he's it. not a trader no i'm not pure even though my dad my dad would have loved it he's a dragon supporter oh, really? yeah he would have loved it but yeah no nah, this that's it it's uh yeah i was born and bred mate um from the area mm. played it's probably five minutes from belmore yeah that was my home ground mm. and belmore was the pinnacle mate i was lucky enough to play in some really good junior footy teams and that's where we always wanted to get to. We yeah. always wanted to get to that stadium to play the grand final on, and mum making streamers, and because you would have, you would have your formative years probably. I'm um, assuming around like ten to fourteen would have been that early two thousand era for the Bulldogs. Yep, yep. So it's, you're looking at like the cream of the crop, dogs of war, the reincarnate. best. The, like I remember moments. So I just missed the boys. I just missed uh, Mason. Oh, I played against Mason, stuff, but at the dogs. Yeah. But I just remember going in. I think I was. I think I got. So I played SG board, and I think I got caught in the Jersey flag. Um, that's that's when I was. I think it was. What was Jersey flag around that time? Would be in twenty twenty twenties twenty ones. Oh man, anyway. you're asking the wrong bloke. <laughs> Sorry, but anyway. So yeah, I was I was young as, and I just remember walking into that that gym, and like you got Utah in there, you got you got Has, you, you're looking at mate, and I'm just like. Man, this is. I was in awe. Yeah, like pure because that's they were the they were the boys. Yeah, they were the dogs of war, mate. And like, I was even I was privileged to be in the gym, same gym as them. You yep. know, as a, as a young kid, and yeah, they and it's and it's crazy. Like I I clearly remember it because Belmont was has had a real revamp. Um, but I just remember the old gym. I remember walking in there. One of the hardest trainers who probably you know helped make me who I am, Gaz Carden. He was the first grade coach then, and mate, he he. He let him rip, and then you know we talk about hard training, and that's yeah. what the dogs is built on. And mm. he was the he was the man yeah. behind that. But um, 
it was just so cool, mate. It was it was cool to be able to come through, you know, be at school. Mm. Ha- Hasm would be visiting my schools. Yeah. And you'd just be like a little puppy dog going, oh, my God, like Hasm's here. And then, mate, eventually being able to be mates with him now, yeah. do community work with him now. Like it's, um, yeah, it's, I'll, I'll never, I'll never, ever, you know, I'm forever grateful for what, like my journey, man. I've had some ups and downs, some absolute stinkers. Yeah. But like how it worked out, mate, I love it. That's so good. Um, and so obviously it was footy from the get-go, you know, as a young fella. Uh, did you play any other sports or was it just... I actually just played soccer okay. when I was five, yep. yep. Old Wanderers. Okay. Um, Is that the hooligan in you? That's where the hooligan came I think came. so. I think so. I actually, yeah. I used to... I did go through a stage where I was going to City FC games, putting like my shirt <laughs> over my head. So I brought it back out. Um, but yeah, that's the, I, I did start in soccer, mate. But then a few of my mates were playing footy and stuff so yep. yeah just went up to the to the dragons and <laughs> i actually played with um our juniors me and chase stanley oh yeah we played chase at stanley, dragons yeah. together yeah um he ended up going to the actual dragons, actual dragons. Yeah. yeah um so yeah mate it's just like um one of those one of those things i just was there imprinted yeah. in me and my grandma's house was like one minute down the road so mate we were always i was always walking up when i found footy mate, i loved it and who, who was your, you know, player growing up, the one you idolised? Yeah, Freddie. Freddie. Loved yeah. him. And that's the thing. There's a there's a photo out there that, um, and this is the thing, like this is, the boys are having a laugh at me, the ladies <laughs> right there. of Because um, they're like, they used to G me up, going, oh, you, you're your Bulldogs through and through, <laughs> this and that. I was like, look, I went through a stage where, you know, I followed my favourite player. Yeah. You know, I just used to love him. Yeah. You know, his big left foot and, so yeah. Sorry about the hat. Sorry about the big diamond <laughs> earring, but I was always Never so when sorry I for that. so I, I don't know shit. what use that did that so does it oh, say you there? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Yeah, but anyway, so that was as soon as I started playing for the Bulldogs, though I was a bull, I was a Bulldogs man. Yeah, as in when you started through the juniors, juniors and stuff. Yeah, so mate, when you're frigging like twelve or thirteen or whatever, you're following whoever your favourite player yeah. is. Like hundred percent. Like I, for example, I soccer. I followed Man United. Because of David Beckham. Mm. If he went to another club, I'm going to follow. Yeah, you're following him. You're following You know what I mean? It's <laughs> yeah, just yeah. like, um, like at that age anyway, when you get a bit older and you understand like being loyal and sticking mm. with things yeah. or whatever. <coughs> um, but yeah, it's just, it's funny. But like Freddie Fittler, what, what, what's your best memory of Freddie Fittler growing up? Do you reckon? Oh, it's a hard one, man. I just, so oh, many. Is, yeah. I, for me personally, it's probably that, the grand final when he had his head taped. Yeah. Blood running down his um, against the Warriors. Yeah, and he possibly. got that big he- big shot. Big big shot changed the game. And I just that's what I love. Like he, that was him, man. I just mm. loved Freddie because he was. Oh, well, I got I actually was lucky enough to be in camp with him for City and stuff. Mm. So I was a bit yeah I was a bit starstruck in those camps. But yeah, I just loved like he was. He never shied away from contact as well. Mm. You know, as halves, it's a bit of a get at the halves. Yeah. Freddie and, and Joey were, were the total opposite. Um, but just how it, it, I just loved his elusiveness, you know, that big left foot, big left foot. Mm. I just used to – I couldn't tell you how many times I practised that in the yeah. backyard. I wonder I wonder because he was a bit bigger six. I wonder if in today's game they would try to make him a 13. You know, I just – I wonder – which would be cool to see because mm. he did play a little bit of 13, didn't he, at, at, some, at stages? Yeah. And so that you'd almost be robbed of one of the greatest sixes ever to play the game because that 13 role is so – I guess it's almost the hot thing right now. That so ball, 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 ball player. Yeah, 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 yeah. You look at the, the top three. Yeah. Yo, Murray, Radley. Yep. Paddy. They all, they all ball play, yeah. And Paddy. Paddy was a front rower and he only really became a good 13 when he worked on his ball playing. Yeah. And so, yeah, it would be really interesting to see where he would play this um, this generation. Okay, so. It's funny, he didn't, he didn't play a lot of 13, but he actually won lock of the year in 1994. Who did? Where? Wow. Freddie. Did he? He won, he won three positional... He won center of the year, five eighth of the year, and lock of the year. So he didn't play a lot, but he played enough, like probably like, I don't know, 30 games, you reckon, at lock? Yeah, I can look. That's like, see what you just said, like three positional. That's crazy. That's Greg Inglis like. Well, well, it is. Yeah. I don't, I, see, I didn't, I didn't know that fact. That's, That's it wild. just puts, like, it just shows you, like, I honestly don't think he, he gets the accolades he probably deserves. Agreed. He does, like, obviously everyone knows, but I don't know, like that, like who can do that? Well, when you go, cause like a lot of time you'll go, this guy, like this group of people, we talk about immortality, but Freddie is usually, uh, some people keep him in that conversation, yeah. but I think he should be in the conversation, like same with Alfie Langer, I think he should be as well. Yeah. But 
yeah, I don't know. I, I agree with you, mate. Like, he gets massive raps, but I think when you really look at his career and how young he was when he did certain things and then obviously position-wise, he's fucking up there with the goats. So he got... In 1992, Centre of the Year. 93, Centre of the Year. 94, Lock of the Year. 98, 99, 02, 5 of the Year. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I was I was pumped that I was in top three of five eights once. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, 100%. And he's like, he's just pumping that, pumping that out. That's, and, and you that know, I like, wild. he's, he, and that's why, you know, and, and that's what I said. Like, I was very lucky enough to have a relationship with him, mate, and I just, I like the bloke he is, man. Like, he's just, he's, di- he's a bit different. Yep. I'd meet him down at Coogee for a coffee every now and then when I was out those ways and we'd just be sitting there and he'd just walk off, didn't say anything, go for a dip, come back and I was like, didn't say anything? Or, <laughs> <laughs> but no, nah, he's a legend, mate. And yeah, yeah I, I'm pretty surprised he stepped down, to be honest. I, I, I think, to be honest, and again, this is just outside looking in and not knowing the, the finer details, but I think it was an insult to offer him a part-time role as a New South Wales Blues coach, especially with everything that he's done for, for the state, in my opinion. Now, I'm a Queenslander, so obviously I'm biased and all that. Mm. But to offer Freddie Fittler a part-time role when he rides around all year and does all the stuff for the community, I think that for him, <coughs> he deserves better than that, in my opinion. I couldn't agree more. Yeah. Like, people will say results and everything. It's a result-driven business. We mm. all know that. But at the same time, he loves New South Wales. Mm. Like... He, like you said, he probably wouldn't have had to have done all that stuff, mm. but he's obviously trying to promote the brand. It's a brand, yeah. like, and, and, and get the numbers going. But at the same time, when he was coaching, you could tell that he, that he loved it. Like, Freddie's not a serious guy, mm. but you can tell when yeah, it was he, he was serious because he, he cared, yeah. you know, and you're right. I actually agree with you. Like, how can you, a great who's done however much for the Blues off the field, mm. sorry, on the field, and then, you know, done his absolute best on it. Yeah, probably a bit of a kick in, kick in the well, teeth. I, I just think he deserved either or. Be strong enough to go, Freddie, mate, thank you, everything you've done, but we believe that we need to go in a different mm. direction. Or you go, mate, some changes need to be made, but you get the full-time role. But that middle weird ground of going, oh, it's going to be part-time and all these other changes, it's like, I think he deserves at least the respect of going, it's either on or it's off. Do you know what I'm saying? Rather mate, than this weird... I couldn't... For, for me personally, you know, yeah. I don't know if you'd be the same. That middle ground in anything in life oh, sucks. Sucks. Because for me personally, mm. I'll be thinking, but well, I don't really, really want me here. Yeah. And that's, you know, in my career, mate, whenever I got a bit of love was when I played my best footy. Yeah. I never thought about, oh, maybe, you know, there was always speculation back at the dogs that forum was coming when Des was there. Mm. Speculation all the time. But when Des would pull me in and literally say, mate, he's not coming, mm. I would have like, uh, just a stint yeah. of games where I'm just like, you know what, like, and that's I don't know, that's just me. No, and like, you, like I, even if Freddie took the job, I just feel he'd be like, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if I'm, I'm loved. Yeah, or you know, is this just a stopgap? Are they gonna? Am I gonna get extended? Mm. Am I not? Like, it's five month contract. Like, what anyway? Yeah, is what it is. Um, okay, so you grow up, you're playing footy. Were you, and I know a lot of players, you know, when they get asked this, it's hard to say because you don't want to sound like a dick, <laughs> but w- were you a standout player growing up or were you a battler or were you? Yeah, nah, battler, mate. Mm. <clears throat> and I'm not talking about this the other way too because I don't people people, no sob story, no nothing, but, mate, I just trained my backside off in, a, in any team I was in. Mm. And that's the only way I broke into it. Barry Ward, one of my old coaches, literally said to me like, and, that, and I don't, don't care that he said it to me. He's like, literally, the only the way you would get into the teams was train. Yeah, well. In SG Ball, I think I played fullback, 5'8", halfback, lock, wing. But I just was in the team. Yeah, and, okay. I, and I sort of take pride in that. Like, I take pride in, you know, being that guy. I, I At a young age, I – and this is one thing I – you know, I do speak to a lot of young Bulldogs guys coming through now and – you don't always have to be the superstar. Mm. This you don't yeah. like play a play a part. Yeah, and by you playing the part, will get you to those places you want to get. Mm. I just think a lot of young guys, you know, they see the Latrells and they see Nathan doing what they do, mm. and you, you you try and you do you try and base your game on them, yeah. base your game on them, but it doesn't matter if you're not him. Yeah, <clears throat> find your own identity early, and that was probably one thing that oh, <clears throat> excuse me. I think I did early. Yeah. I did, and I was just okay with it. Yeah, I just went into these teams, and it was actually a funny joke. The first preseason I got into, 
Harry Harris. Do you ever link up with Harry Harris? No, uh, not at he's all. a trainer anyway. Yeah, no, no. English fella, hilarious. Yeah. Um, he would say to me, "They've literally just brought you here to be the rabbit." <laughs> so like this is when Mick Ennis was there, and Mick was big on his training. Yeah. And so obviously, you know, like greyhounds, they chase a rabbit. That's he goes. That's all you're here for. Wow. But in saying that, I was like, you know what? Good. Yes. I'm gonna go uh, after it. Yeah. I'm, I'm here. Yeah. I'm here. I don't care why I'm here. I'm just here. <laughs> exactly right, mate. Yeah. So. Yeah, no, it's answered the question, mate. I, I wasn't, but at the same time, I just, yeah, I think it's a, it's a hard thing to do when you're young, like mm. to e- accept that you know you, you might, you might not be what you want to be, but at the same time, I think it helps you. Yeah, because you realise like, there's a role to be played. There's a, there's a, what am I going to say? There's a David Stag in every team. Yeah. Why not get the accolades that he deserves? But oh my god, he makes those game-winning tackles. Yep. I'd rather my son eventually, if I do have kids, to be that guy. Mm. That's that's I, I love that. Yeah, yeah, uh, mate. It's uh, it's it's really important for a young player because once you are honest with yourself and you know exactly what your strengths or weaknesses are, you can build what you need to build mm. to make a side. Whereas if you want to be, for example, if you want to be the the highlight real center, but you don't have the strength to do that or the physique or whatever, then you're you're going to constantly be trying to make plays that don't work for the team mm. whereas if you realize you know what i'm not a highlight real center but i can defend better than any center in the game yep. you now come become known as the best offensive center in the comp and there's two sides to the game there's attack and defense they're both equally important i mean yep. look at the the Penrith panthers that's they built their whole premiership runs on defense mm. and, and the perfect example of that is, is josh morris mm. i think and this isn't saying jamos was a great attacker mm. as well but His for me the bet probably for me personally, the best defensive centre I've ever seen mm. and played next to. I was lucky enough to play next to him and never felt so safe in my life. Mm. But for, for me, in a game, I'd rather that than, you know, obviously it's cool to see a centre bang feet on the out, but I just love one who never misses a jam. Yeah. Who's got your, you know, if you get if I get beat on the outside, he's got me. Yeah. It's just, there's, like you said, so much to both sides, mm. to rugby league in general. Yeah, absolutely. Um, okay, so... At what point, though, so you're battling, you're battling away, at what point did you, I guess, get the feeling, oh, like I might, you know, I'm doing well in reserve grade or well in, because I see here you progressed 2008, 2009, under 20s, but then you moved into the New South Wales Cup um, and named the Canary New South, 2010 New South Wales Cup Player of the Year. Um, was that a surprise, not a surprise? Like how did that kind of come about? Yeah, I, I reckon when I started playing with men mm. is when I started, because um, I didn't, under twenties was I was in the first Toyota Cup um, team oh, ever. Really? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. you got a bit of TV time yeah, and yeah. thought you were killing it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's what. And I ha- like now I think about it, it was the worst competition ever because all those guys that had done that hard yakka to play before first grade go back before a bunch of twenty year old kids. Yeah, so it was it was silly. But while I'm in, it, I'm like loving it up. Yeah. But then I got into um, reserve grade, but maybe we had an unbelievable team. Yeah. So this we is had, when the twenties comp was crazy and then obviously new south wales cup was crazy yeah so i I was playing with the likes of like brad morin trent cutler um jared hickey some guys that have played a lot of first grade Mm. um and they just helped me out mate they really did the best thing i loved about those blokes was whenever they not obviously they're at their stage i was nowhere near that but they wanted to be first grade every week but whenever they'd come down they just really give us the time of day Mm. we were working and then coming to training after and I just, that's why we won. Because mm. we won two comps in a row. Actually, the comp, the club won three in a row. Wow. That In Reggie's. Holy. So, like, we had a great side. Mm. Um, but that's why. Because they didn't think they were better than us. Like, they just, they embraced us. And for me personally, being the half in that team, I think that's what helped me grow. Mm. And, you know, you're not playing against kids anymore. And um, But I think the one moment, mate, was, you know, I... I I debuted in 2011. Jimmy Dimmick gave me my start mm. at hooker. That was just a – it was um, sorry, Mick Ennis got ruled out. Mm. I'd play anywhere to debut, you know mm. what I mean? Oh, absolutely. So, <clears throat> played hooker. But then that next year was when Des come. Mm. Um, and they had Trent Hodgson and Chris Keating there who were the halves. But there was one meeting I had with Des. It was just, I think it was maybe the first ever one. Never met Des before. Mm. Obviously heard he's a bit, a bit scary. <laughs> I'm a bit nervous, young, going yeah. in there. And I think he just literally said something like, you're a 5'8". And I'd never really thought about playing 5'8". Like, mm. I'd play in halves, um, literally half back yeah. for um, 
New South Wales Cup, mm. played hooker off the bench, always had that utility tag. Mm. Um, but then, yeah, Des just said, you're a 5'8". And then, mate, from that day on, I just stuck with that. Because if he's telling me that, he just, he'd won comps with Manly. He'd, yeah. Des was, you know, at that stage, was known as my probably one of the best coaches at, at that time. Yeah, Still is. Yeah. But, yeah, so from that day on, mate, I, that, I think that was when the penny dropped. That Like, I just was like, you know what, just stick with that. Mm. Hold on to that. He's going to be the coach here for four years. Mm. Embrace that. And, yeah, I sort of never – I feel I never looked back from that conversation. Yeah, yeah, okay. someone backing me. Mm. And, you know, I feel that whole time I always had that. I didn't like the utility tag because sometimes it's it's probably why you're not getting into teams, but then sometimes it is why you're getting into yeah, teams. Do you know what sure. I mean? It's Absolutely. a bit of a weird one. Yeah. But then from that day on, mate, like I was like, nah, I'm having a crack at this. And, yeah, yeah it was, it was wow. good. So what year was your first preseason with um, first grade? So it would have been two ten. So it would have been two thousand and nine. Okay. Yeah. Is there? What did you remember from that pre? Because that's it's just a whole other level, and you see why the big dogs are the big dogs. Is there anything you remember from that first preseason? Just like how intense it is. Mm. Like you know, you go from um, probably like I actually reckon it's one of the hardest periods of your life mm. for me personally, and this is why I think some young guys drop off. Yeah. Like you go from working, um, you go from working a full day into um, training. You know, you go about eight hours on the shovel, four, three hours at training after you get home late. Man, that's a tough time in your life. Absolutely. Like there's not shying away from that. Like that's, it's hard work and a lot of people still do it now to this day. Mm. But I think it teaches you values. Mm. I really do. And that's where I think some kids miss it when they go straight from school into NRL squads. Yeah. Um, but then... Once, you know, in, in 2009 when I got the nod to, to train with first grade, you just realise how, like, wow, well, this is this is it. Mm. Like, you're, you're not there yet, but you, you're sort of here and this mm. is your one opportunity you get. Um, I, that's what I think those first couple of years, hanging around guys like Mick Ennis, Dean Hallitow, Stag, you're like, you, you just, you have to fully be in. Mm. You can't hunt, you can't dip the toe in. Yeah. It's not about going out on Saturday night to Sapphire and oh. and drink. You know, like yeah. it's it because it, that's that's what you everyone thinks it is. Oh, these footy players they get everything, they get to have the best lives. But just seeing how methodical in their preparation you need to be for every day of training. Yeah, and how in meetings, whether you like it or not, being a half, you've got to have input. Yeah, and just like it's just a big wake up call. Yeah, it really is. You, some days you're like. Oh, get me back on the shovel. <laughs> yeah, mate. <laughs> when I have absolutely. to talk in front of like guys like that, like yeah. it's just it's hard, mate. But at yeah. the same time, it's everything you dream of as a kid. Yeah. So um, yeah, it was a it was a, it's a rude shock. We've all been through it. Yeah. But at the same time, mate, it's it makes you, doesn't it? Oh, absolutely. Preseasons make you. Oh, and you, you're right yeah. in regards to it is probably the hardest period of your life because you've not only have you got so much work as you just suggested and like all the training and. But it's also, it's the pressure that you're putting on yourself of like, this has to happen because if it doesn't happen, I feel like my life's going to end. Like that's yep. how much you want it kind yep. of thing. Yeah. Um, okay, so your debut, do you remember how your debut came about? Yeah. yeah. So it was, um, so Mick and has heard his, I think he's heard his neck yep. in origin or something like that. And <clears throat> yeah, I always had a really good relationship with Jimmy. He yeah. knew my dad from back in the day and stuff. Okay. So I always, it was good. It was actually, so coming into that squad, I sort of could have a laugh yep. and asking questions. Um, but then, yeah, so Mick got injured and Jimmy was like, he said something like, you want to play or what? <laughs> just how he is. Like, I said, what do you mean, first grade? And he goes, I said, because I was thinking in my head, I was like, oh, the halves aren't out. Mm. But anyway, I was like, yeah, sweet. He goes, well, you want to play hooker? <laughs> and then back in, those, like back in the day, I obviously, I was a bit, no, I had probably had no fear. Yeah. So like, I'm like, yeah. 100% let's go like you know like as, as I'm speaking to him yeah. but then at the same time I just remember who we were playing that week it was a Friday I think a Friday night freezing cold in Canberra oh yuck and they had Shillington Leroy Lars oh, White God. Tilts oh. and I'm just thinking fuck obviously you, you gotta back yourself you gotta yeah. be confident and pretend like yeah yeah sweet Jimmy yeah you don't but, wanna be like oh I don't know bro you wanna be deep like deep down mate sweet. I was shitting myself yeah and I just remember all week. That's what I was thinking of. Their pack, <laughs> you know. I was trying to embrace the like, families over the moon and sort tickets, but I just remember like, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? So literally, I was just like, mate, just get line speed. Yeah. And back then, you could shoulder charge. <laughs> so it was just like try and like 
try and get there and just stop the momentum. Yeah. And, but yeah, mate, back to like it was, it, it's it, mate. That's it. You've, you've sort of, everything you've dreamt of as, as a kid, you've mm. got there. Probably not exactly how you want it, but mate, take, take. it and just run with it. Um, but mate, yeah, I just, I just remember, <clears throat> I honestly remember a moment just with my mum, just like, just because like, we were so close at that time, mate. And I just, I just remember looking at her, just saying like, we've done it, you know, yeah. like, cause as you know, your family's a big part of all of it and they all come down to Canberra, but I just don't think I'll ever, that face that like she gave was just like super proud, man. Yeah. Like it's something like a hold close to my heart. It's yeah. um, super special. Yeah. Mate, it's uh you can try to put into words how much it means between you and the family because but you can't because no one what words could ever describe the day in day out support that your parents and i i recently just had my first uh child and it nice. fully hits home of like oh wow like imagining him achieve something like that mate i don't know how they're not running on the field hugging everyone you know what i mean <laughs> i don't know how because like if i i imagine him doing that i would be so out like my head would explode yeah and so and what's crazy is and i'm sure you know it would be similar for yourself oh well I'm, I'm not sure but i'd assume like you know we didn't have any money growing up my mom used to drive everywhere like it was so tough for us like for her sorry not for us she yeah. made it easy yeah because she protected us and so did our father whereas like now it would like let's say i play in rl and my son ends up playing in a lot of sport it's less of an achievement because i've been privileged enough to build this life because of the sacrifices of my parents. You understand yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, of course I do, mate. So that meaning that like that you would have had to go through to get what you got, incredible. And you don't realise it till now. Yeah. You don't realise like why why wasn't you know, why wasn't she eating what we were eating? Yeah. Like, you know, and like it's this isn't mate at that sob story because my mate, like she's happy and, and, and sweet right now. But yep. it's just you don't you never get it as a mm. kid. You mm. expect it. Like, well, of course I should have this. <laughs> yeah. Well, Mikey does. Mm. My best mate does. You know, Mikey's, but, you know, of course I should have a nice house. Or, or even like, even little things like, man, I've always got hand-me-downs. Like, I always yeah. got hand-me-down boots. Like, all the other kids I go to training, they got the new boots. Like, for when I was playing soccer, a few of the kids, all they had predators. Yeah. And he used to sting they were the goats. me. They were the goats. And I, I, it used to sting me so much that I didn't like them because I was like, why do they get to have all this mm. money and just buy whatever they want? I get fucking my brother's old shitty boots or whatever. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. So you, could, you wish you could tell your young self, like, shut like, up. Slap, it, slap, yeah. slap yourself. Exactly. Like, because they're like, but it's true, man. Yeah. You want, like, you, you see, don't, you want those boots, like, man. You're like, yeah. oh, mate, they're mad, you know. They're so good. Yeah. So, but no, nah, it's. That's that's the journey though, isn't it? You, yeah. You're probably I, I'm probably doing it a lot of it right now. Mm. Just retired. Yeah. Just reminiscing about yeah. a lot of things, mm. decisions I made, decisions I didn't make. Impacts, like I probably get asked this a lot. Like impacts people have had in your life. Yeah. You just yeah. While footy's on, you're on the roller coaster. You never get to sit and be like, this is why that, that happened or yeah, that's absolutely. why. So it's nice to be able to do that now. Um, do you remember anything from the game specifically? Well, I lost the game. I gave away the penalty, and <laughs> <laughs> they kicked the two, which is which is very unlike me. <laughs> I give away a penalty. That wasn't a, that wasn't a, a preview. <laughs> no, no, but no. I just honestly remember how cold it was, and I just never. I hate the cold, and I went to England weirdly <laughs> enough, but freezing cold, and yeah, we were in the game, and that's what I just remember. Just get just that's what because I had a good talk to Mick because mm. he's obviously the hooker at that time, and he's like, mate, just get line speed. So I just remember. I was pretty fit, so I was just like every time I was like bang bang. It's like I was doing a yo yo, yeah. But then contact, but then bang, <laughs> contact backside, yeah. Contact backside, but mate, what an what an experience, and mm. yeah, lucky enough to you know play a few games after that in that year, and then yeah, have a. And 2012 was incredible. Yeah. Um, but your <coughs> first NRL try though, surely you remember your first meeting. Oh, it's a good question. Was it? It was against uh, the round Sharks. 15 Sharkies. I did there in the go. corner and I got in trouble for it. Why? Because I laid up. Oh, oh no. no. I laid up. I um, <laughs> Well, like, look, I don't think I laid up because, look, to my, in my defence, I've done it my whole career. Yeah. Not laid up. Um, <laughs> now I, I I dive. Like, it's a bit of a, a, bit, a bit of a swan dive. And I've, yeah. all, and I've always sort of done it. But um, I remember Tony Gribaldi, just a hard-nosed guy, like, legend. Yeah. Loved him, but... I remember it was like I hit Cassiano short 
come off my light rifle, hit him short. Cassiano broke through, backed up on the inside, and Nathan Gardner, quick as. Yeah. Remember quick. Nathan Gardner? Quick. Yeah, super quick. Um, so, yeah, it was sort of a race to the corner, but he reckons I could have went in a bit. Oh, really? But I don't know. I don't, I don't know if I could have, but, yeah, he was like, you swan, you swan dived, so he went further in the corner, <laughs> and the kick was hard. But, like, in saying that, we talk about, like, I took it on. I was like, oh, I'm so sorry, mate. Yeah, like, you know, sure. like, but You know what's hilarious is, like, <laughs> The younger generation listening right now, when you said laired up, they would have thought you like did some dance or something like that. Yeah. Whereas when we were coming through, layering up was like celebrating. Yeah. So like, I remember I got in trouble by the boys, uh, scored the match winner against Cowboys, uh, 75th minute. Like it was a good try. And all I, I, I didn't intentionally layer up. It was just my body releasing all these emotions. <laughs> yeah. So I got up and grabbed the, and did these ones. Bro, I got in trouble for that. For the badge grab. For the badge grab. Nah, see. Who, who was India? Mate, just the boys. The bo- fucking layering up. Oh. Like, yeah, kid, how mad, bro? How mad do you think you are? I love a badge grab. <laughs> I, I lived done. off it. <laughs> Mate, I got done for the badge grab. Match winner as well. Match winner see, as I, I, Sold out I Suncorp. I object to that. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I do. I do. I, whoever whoever was India, I was like, come on, boys. Let him, <laughs> let him have that moment. Oh, mate. Fuck, it's, so, it's, it's just funny how it changed. Like, layering up back in the day was literally, if you don't, because we always used to get told, you score a try, <laughs> you put your head down and you walk back to halfway. Yeah, so if yeah. you watch, well, you don't have to watch my debut, but in my <laughs> debut watch I scored. Yeah, let's watch it right now. So in my debut I scored and if you watch, it was a, literally a, a 75 metre try. So it was, a, it was a good try. That's a great try. <laughs> I um, I put debut. it down. Debut, yeah. It was, it, it, I was, it was all Wayne Bennett. So You're not allowed to layer up? No, not at all. So I, I <sighs> basically kick return. Chip Chase, Wayne Bennett said, basically Wayne Bennett said to me at the start of the game, I said this, I told this story before, so apologies for listeners. Wayne Bennett said at the start of the game, get really deep because we know that uh, Brett Stewart um, loves a chip. Like, should I, Orford? Orford would have been Orford, yeah. yeah. Orford, they love a chip. So you get deep, they're going to think you're, you're quick. They're going to think that, oh, he's too deep. And so midway through the game, Laurie Daly actually comments on saying, oh, you know, Rookie's playing really well, but he's, he's way too deep. But I've been told by Wayne to get deep to draw the chip chase out. Anyway, so they do the chip. I, I gather the chip, run through, score the try. And if you watch the video, I put it down. And I just put my head down and walk back. Uh, because we were always told by all the older boys, if you fucking layer up, get out of wow. here. And that, but you know what I find funny about that? <coughs> At the Broncos, right? Yeah. Wendell Saylor. I know. Surely he layered up. He's the, he's the king of it. He, but that, like, he had that unique – like another quick story. We got caught going out uh, – uh, Wednesday, me, Darius, uh, Carmichael, Hodjo. Anyway, so only me and Darius got called in the office and Wayne Bennett blew up at us. Not blow up, but just got angry at us. And we had the audacity to say, but like, K Hodjo. Ooh. And he was like, are you Carmichael Hunt? Are you Justin Hodges? No. And I think the Wendell Saylor situation as well is like, that's dealt. Yeah. So he can get away with yeah. it maybe. I don't know. And don't who, know. Um, well, even right now. But I ain't telling Del you can't do anything. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> do exactly. whatever you want, man. <laughs> exactly. Um, okay, so that first year happens. The second year, 2012, was obviously the grand final uh, against the Storm. But walk us through that year because I'm assuming probably looking back, it's just like all this crazy blur for you. But, I mean, first of all, what an incredible year. But second of all, what, what stands out for you in that season? Oh, mate, probably just <clears throat> the way we attacked. Mm. It was, I don't know if you remember, but it was pretty much when we, the first team to start playing through the forwards. Yeah. With James Graham, Sam Cassiano, Greg Eastwood had all those silky hands. Yeah. And as we we're talking about before, all the locks do it now. Yeah. Everyone plays like it through the forwards pretty much. Yeah. But I just remember how good it was because for me personally as well, like I had Benny Barber there mm. who was untouchable. 2012. Literally un- untouchable. Mm. But like just just remember like defensive reads. Mm. <laughs> like when they're just playing the simple, like, you know, whatever we call it now, bear shape. But like guys were jamming from like center to try and get me, and it was just, yeah. I just sometimes it just opened up and you just go, How good is this? And it's like, almost just, like too easy to it, like not too easy, but it felt like what, what's happening, yeah. Because that, like, we just knew because we backed the process, and mm. like, that's why you know, I love Des for how much he improved my game. But, mm. And you know what, to be completely honest, it was probably a, for any half in the game, and we used to cop a bit of criticism, it was a bit of a kick in the guts because. We didn't get our hands on the ball first. Mm. So I remember talking to Hocko about it, saying, like, is it? Why is no one else playing like this? Like, yeah. why is it only us? But, it, but yeah, it probably was because, like, I'm not, I wasn't the greatest ball player. Mm. Not probably different to Hocko. Hocko's a good ball player. But maybe mm. it was just a bit because, you know, he, he felt that, you know, Jimmy Graham come over and had silky hands. Mm. Cassiano, same thing. So they're like big halfbacks. Yeah. So, um, 
that's probably the one thing I remember. Just, just the, especially because I play now, mm. and I know how easy people read like what we were doing yeah. back then. <laughs> yeah. Everyone's like, "Are you serious? <laughs> <laughs> Going to try that little bear thing you tried?" But um, that was a, probably. A it's stand, funny yeah. you say that because I was playing um, reserve grade at the time. We were playing reserve grade bulldog side, and that was that. That was the whole video session was talking about how you boys, your forwards ball play. Yeah. And so, and you guys definitely did introduce that to the, like people say, oh, um, ball, ball play, uh, forwards have ball played before, but not in the system the way the Bulldogs did it that year. No. Nah. Not at all. Like we don't, was, we don't every play. Yeah. Like literally, we, there may be a bit, one or two plays on try line mm. that mean whoever the halves were would have touched the ball first off the hooker, but everything else we literally played through the whole yeah. way, the yeah. whole way through. And, but I wasn't complaining because mm. like, yeah, we were, scoring tries off the back of it and yeah as i just mentioned before like a lot of attention was around benny mm. so like we were just our us as halves we just we'd slot in anywhere and play yeah. off the back of it so mate that was obviously a big thing but then yeah that grand final mate it was really upsetting because like i just and i hate saying it but like, i do like we should have won mm. like we everything we'd done that year we done the exact same thing but Melbourne just got that last finger on it. You know, every pass that year, Benny, Benny nailed. Yeah, okay. But, you know, twice, I know I, I had a conversation with someone, I think it was C, um, Cisa Wanga, or Cisa Wacker, um, the Mel, Wanga? Wanga, yeah. It, he, yeah. He, it was him. Yeah. And for some reason, well, Melbourne jam, mm. every time it just got the fingers on it. Yeah. And then you just go, oh, and what could have been, you know, yeah. but at the same time, Melbourne were too smart. You mm. know, they, they picked me apart personally, mm. like, Send me out, send me under, and it just yeah. Look, it's it's one of those ones where I will. I never got to win a grand final. I played in two. The South one. I don't. I feel this one hurts more. Yeah. Okay. Because I feel we we're more in it. Yeah. Um, and we just had the team to win it. Yeah. And that just yeah really sucks. <laughs> what, what was the anything you remember from the build up or anything like the fans just going crazy in that? Oh man, like nothing ever. Mm. That like, I say it now. Like the fans were not. So the main shape of Bel Belmore, Bellwood Road, um, like cops weren't blocking it off, fans were. <laughs> so like the boys are just ripping out the, the WRXs, literally blocking off both ends of the street, ripping out mad burnouts and like just the whole week. Mm. Like I remember li I remember um, living, so I, used, when I lived there. Yeah. Five, 400 metres away, so I could hear the drums. Wow. I would hear them every day, mate, and just like, I remember I, I remember I, quick story i come down with my mate once i was like Matt, because i might not who knows you might never get me get him on again mm. so i wanted to just see what was going on in the street mm. so we drove down um in the car like slowly the street was packed <laughs> slow 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 and mate like someone's like someone's like seen in the window yeah and they just ripped the door open <laughs> got me out on the sh on the shoulders and this is like grand final week <laughs> And I'm just praying, Des, please don't Des see this, please, because he's obviously going to think, oh, I've gone down there, like, well, carry on. down there, yeah. yeah, yeah. But I literally got, yeah, like, got ripped out of the car, and mate, but funny experience. And so you're sitting on someone's shoulder, just going, like, going like that. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, oh. that's all I was thinking about. But I was like, no, no, please don't, man, please don't. Yeah, like, but yeah. then that's all I was thinking about, like, Des, what's he going to say? Mate. What is he honestly going to say? Yeah. But, but mate, thank I'm God it's not today, because phones would have been straight out. Oh, gone. It would have been on the news straight, straight away. away. Well, they, they phones, <laughs> phones were still around then, but not as much. Yeah. Every, that's all everyone does now. Well, it used to be even then it was almost uncouth to film people and send it to, to the media or, yep. or send it to your mates. Now it's like as soon as something happens, it's almost normalised to do that stuff, which it's is weird to me. But. So funny now we go to big events and people are watching stuff through their face. It's crazy. Yeah. It's actually it's it's crazy how. Enjoy the moment. Yeah, like, absolutely. You know what I mean? it's yeah, so you lose that GF. As a young fella, are you thinking, well, is it actually, sorry, is there any player that stood out for you in the Storm side in that game where you were just like, far out, this guy is special? Well, we'll take your pick. <laughs> Kronk, Smith, Slater. Oh, man. The one guy that got me got me good that day, and look, I'm, I'm happy to talk about it now, was like Ryan Hoffman. Mm-hmm. We always used to have a really good battle, me and him. Yeah. I'd just like, you know, try and get into him and um, he's the nicest guy ever because I ended up being in, in um, Origin with him and stuff. So yeah. we, we actually roomed together. <laughs> so it was a bit awkward. Yeah. But when I say that, like all good, like yeah. in, it wasn't like, yeah, you know, I get in games, a bit excited sometimes. But <laughs> he just like, they just yeah, read me really well. Like, because they obviously, they, they knew how our defence worked. They knew we were 
very jammy on, mm. on the outside, Jack, Josh Morris and whatever. Mm. Um, so just his like lines he was running on me. Got me, I don't know if you remember, like, you remember the try, but it was sort of that play where, um, so the back row were running straight, sort of took me out. And that was my job in the Bulldogs system, that, that take the back rower. No matter what he does, Just take the back, take the back rower. Mm. So for me, it was actually quite easy as a half because all you got to do is, you know, and I didn't mind having, having a whack. Yeah. Whereas like now it's like back row, full back, back, where yeah. am I going? So like he took, first time he took me out, and bang, like Cooper Cronk goes in, no looker, Billy Slater around the back, yeah, gone, yeah, gets me. Oh, and then next one, so I see Billy sniffing around the middle, so I'm like, all right, they're, they're coming again. <laughs> sort of does that play, but Billy slides out the back, Inu jams that little outline gone. Yeah. So it's just everyone, everyone says like there's, but he was, he was a great manipulator of halves, mm. I felt, as a back rower. Mm. Um, just yeah, and he got, got me on the big stage, unfortunately. But you know what, man? It's one of those things, isn't it? You can look back and well, when you look back and you go, mate, you're in your second year of first grade. Yeah, like, but against, still, still hurt. I would, man. I would still hurt for sure. Oh. But as a fan looking in, you go, okay, you got Cam Smith, <laughs> Billy Slater, Cooper Cronk, and Hoffman. Like you, it's if you're gonna get done by someone. At least they're a high quality. You know what I mean? At yeah, least you're not yeah. getting done yeah, yeah. by a, a spine that two years later wasn't even playing. <laughs> they're just game. licking their lips going, we got it. <laughs> the Melbourne we, Storm was got him. Mate. Yeah. Oh. But yeah, it would be absolutely heartbreaking. What do you reckon you learnt the most from that grand final as a young? Because you're what? You would have been like 21 years old at that stage? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, that's a good question, man. I don't... I just think... For me personally, like that was my first big game, mm. um, and it's hard not to let the occasion get the better of you. Um, I actually didn't have like I had some good stats in the game. Not mm. that that means anything, but like not that the occasion got me. But probably just around make sure your preparation is exactly the same. Yeah, because okay. a lot goes in a grand final week. Yeah, yeah, you, 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 there's a lot, man. Like mm. you got to be at the breakfast, which is different. You got to media every day mm. you got fans at training sessions it's hard like it's but but you want to embrace it at the same time and enjoy it yeah but i suppose if i was telling my young self me you know me right now tell my young self like just prep exactly the same mm. and any other that's probably any other game big game that's what i learned yeah okay make sure you've got a game to play at the end of the week um but then, yeah, you find the balance a bit later. Like you, yeah. you, you know what you can do. You know what you can't do. You know, you know if you are going to a breakfast, you know don't indulge in the the big buffet before, <laughs> even though it's there. Just little yeah, things like little that, things. I guess. Yeah. Um, and then the next year, you make your Origin debut. Do you remember how that came about? Yeah, not well. They didn't play straight away, but yeah, I remember. You know, Loz, um, I got called into the squad, mm. um, but I had to have a, a train off. With um, Johnny Sutton. So weird. It <laughs> Walks was, through the train up. <laughs> oh, mate. Like, so Loz has brought us in. Oh, mate. Obviously stoked to be even yeah. in the question. Um, and then uh, he's like, look, boys, he's obviously a part of the squad, but um, I'm not sure if I want to go with like a, a 14 utility or a bigger body. Mm. Um, so he pretty much just said, look, we're going to have a train off. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, right, a train off. So like, so he said, yeah, so to have this first day, flush the system out, um, get on the you can get on the beers with the boys this night, but just know by Wednesday mm. I'm gonna make a decision. Mm. So I was actually a bit nervous because so you got because obviously the I don't know if it's still the same now, but the origin piss up the first night was like a big thing. Yeah. It was like spoken about and whatever happens and you're just like, Oh, I'm so nervous. Yeah. <laughs> but at the same time I was worried because I was like, Man, I've got a big train off soon so <laughs> but anyway i indulged it, <coughs> i indulged on the monday because i was like i've got to be a part of that yeah the folklore yeah. but i don't think it would have been able to get away with it anyway like yeah that they just like pulling you anyway <laughs> it was fun but yeah look when tuesday come um we had that first day and i just remember being so nervous the one thing i remember being so nervous about was he wanted me to play hooker mm. off the bench possibly and I just remember my left to right off the ground was stinking <laughs> <laughs> oh mate i was like Harbour Bridges. And I just remember that's what I wanted to practice that day. Yeah. And I just remember I, I grabbed one of the trainers. Mm. I just said, man, can you just let me do a few off the deck? Um, 
And, mate, I was just, like, whizzing. And, uh, oh, no. and I was just like, no, this is what i got to practice. I, mean, I stayed there for ages and whacked a few out. Anyway, so night, the morning comes of the next morning and I was so nervous because I was like, what's this going to consist of? <laughs> yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, is it like going to go, right, yeah, boys, yeah. we got the train off. Are we going to have, like, a race? You know, you used to race at the, at the grounds. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, it was just more or less like, yeah, he just slotted this in where we thawed. And yeah. um, I was just, mate doing my best like probably doing stuff i shouldn't have done like running and doing outrageous things but then at the same time i was just trying to be like composed and yeah. just fanging those balls out in front and yeah. i actually think i threw a, a stink or two oh, no. out in front i think it would have been maloney or pc dropped like dropped it yeah and i was like oh, great i've lost it I'm like, oh, i've lost the train off yeah, yeah but then yeah anyway mate the day the day comes and then we go back to our room and i was like i'll let you know in about an hour mm. so i had a meeting and then um yeah finally come in he's like mate i'm gonna go with you Oof. and i just literally remember i was being, we were in the hallway um of the um no uh, in Kuji. yeah um and then yeah man like i just remember grabbing my phone ran straight out like bawling my eyes out because it was just it just added to the the yeah. build up you know like yeah. it was my first ever one and mm. I was just, I remember like as we spoke about before, the family's on edge. I just remember mm. ringing like everyone, like, I'm in, I'm in. And yeah, it was a, it was a crazy but but cool moment. Yeah. Um, and I'll actually never forget it. Just I just remember like being like, it's a different type of nerve, man. Like I'd played three years, no, two years, no, three years, sorry, and played the grand final, but mm. it was a, just a different type of nerve. Yeah. It was, it was crazy. The whole state, I guess. Just yeah. On your back. Oh, yeah. Oh, shit. Um, so you didn't debut that game, but you obviously debuted the next game. Yeah. What's that feeling like running on? Yeah. So it was a weird start, you know, mm. like go through the train <laughs> off and then old Loz decides <laughs> me not to throw me on. But look, all in all, yeah, you, you don't care. Mm. Honestly, like, yeah. It's, it's, I know I've, I've, I've prided myself on being that team guy and mm. it, Loz just said, mate, I just didn't feel the need to get you in because the game was close that game. Yeah. And I was like, mate, no worries. Mm. Everyone always asks me, did you get the matchy? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even think of that. Oh, but um, but no, but then, yeah, mate, when I got onto that, the second time, he's like, man, I'm definitely going to use you. Mm. So <clears throat> I knew he wouldn't have said that to me before the game if he, you know, yeah. didn't mean it. So I just remember being on the bench and um, just a million things going through my head, mate. Yeah. Like that's, because that's like, you know, as I was speaking about when I went up before, like I just, to be honest, I just didn't think I um belong there mm. and that's just oh, that was just my own demons i had i just was like man like it's crazy mm. it's just and i just remember sitting on the bench thinking weird stuff yeah. like i did i was just like but then i just snapped out of it. i was like you know what grow up wake up to yourself like have a crack it's all you gotta do yeah that's sort of all, like all you you prided yourself on your whole career and what just because you're here now like, anyway mm. so i just remember when i first run on at hooker running around like a headless chook my mate um Blocker's son, Liam Roach, actually says to me, he goes, I just remember it for some reason. Like, you were running to get to tackles from, like, C, <laughs> where you know you shouldn't have been anywhere near it. But then I wouldn't get into that tackle. And then he said, I'll come at A. And then they shift it. Anyway, the final, the final, my first ever one was, I remember whoever the half was, could have been Cooper Cronk or someone. He was doing a drop play with Papali, and I sort of half read it. And mate, I just said, I'm going here. <laughs> and half tried to whack him. And I've just come off second base. He sort of went a bit back. Yeah. And he's and, and Liam just says like, like, what makes you want to do that? <laughs> like, like, why would you pick out like Papali like, yeah. out of all people? But yeah. I think it was just all that nervous energy and um. But yeah, mate, ended up, you know, playing and it was unbelievable, mate. Yeah. Like an experience. I'll my most probably proudest moment mm. um in my whole career to be able to put on that Blues jersey. Um, it was something you know as kids we all dream of it as kids and. Mm. Yeah, it had, it had a, a twist to it, like my life usually does, but it was in the end, mate. So, so grateful. Yeah. Very grateful. Um, and then the next year, you obviously see that incredible year. Like, how does it feel to think of that 2014 Origin, you know, series? And then obviously you made the grand final, but that series is, you know, drought breaking series. Walk, walk us through the series. Like, what what's special about it? What stands out for you? Oh, I just think you just got to. You know, if we had both lineups right now, right next, which I would look at one, two, mm. three, that we probably, our team would probably win two, mm. if that. Yeah. Like, you know, Hayne versus Slater. Mm. At that time, very close. I reckon yeah. Hayne in his prime. But then, you, you know, be more, like, we'd, we'd be very close. It would be very close to getting two. Yeah. Because, like, you just look at that team. Stacked. Like, you, you only just look at it stacked as. Yeah. And, mate, like, 
funnily enough, like all the Queensland media, Courier Mail and that were like, they, I think there was an article like, I don't know what it was. It was like, who let the duds out? Oh, really? Yeah, like me and Hocko because wow. they picked us. Yeah, it was yeah, something. Okay. Well, I think I've still got the um, mad, that's weird mad. that my mum kept that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no, um, yeah, like just because like, and that's, mate, you do think that because like yeah. they have an aura about them. Like this is like, I'm not, I'm not talking like a, like it's not even like a Penrith like or, or a Melbourne Storm or it's like a, like you look at all that, like you look at first and they're all playing together. I know. It's, it's crazy. So like. Never for, happened again, I don't reckon. For us, like we just, I just remember going in and saying, like, you look at, like, I was remember listening to guys like Greg Bird, Gow, like Farrah, they'd all been a part of all that eight year of hardship. Mm. You know, they'd all been there. So I just remember them going, like, the only way we're going to beat them is if we go after them. Mm. We can't give them what they want. We can't. So, yeah, for, and I was just like, <laughs> that suits me. <laughs> yeah, <thanks. laughs> Let me off the leash. Let's go, man. Like, you know, like, and that's the thing. It was actually good because, Coming into camp, it was, it was a bit different for me in Hocko because mm. um, like Des was a very controlling coach. He wanted to, you know, in meetings he spoke a lot. Mm. Usually like these days, our Harbs do a lot of the talking. Yeah. But then even, yeah, back then Des done it all. But then Loz sort of come up to us and said, boys, like you got to take control of this team. Mm. That's probably the first time that we had to take full proper control. Yeah. So I just remember sometimes like an example like Farah Mm. yelling out at me saying what like what do you want like, yeah what, like honestly like but he's just like used to that whereas like i'm used to saying like oh um jimmy graham like you you go i'll play out the back yeah things okay. like that so it's just a bit different that's yeah. probably i don't know why but i do remember that mm. just being how hard it was to be able to bloody tell tell like um yeah hainsy jump out the back yeah, go over there or do, do this, mind? Or yeah, yeah but that's it but it made me grow as a player yeah. i think mate um but yeah just that series, mate. That first game up in Queensland, mm. the hardest game I've ever played in. Yeah. Ever. Oh. Men like mentally, physically. I just I just never, never been so tired in my life. I couldn't mm. think. Yeah. Loud crowd. Yeah. Throwing four X's at you. <laughs> but like it's just and I just remember like the, the relief after just holding on. Mm. I can't remember the score. It was very close. It was like maybe eight six, something ridiculous. Like just going like, wow, we've beaten them in Queensland yeah. for the first time, like in a long, long time. And yeah. it was just such a such a relief. Mm. But then you got to go back and win it in Sydney. And mm. so, mate, like just the weeks in camp, it was because like for once, the pressure was probably on us. Yeah. Like pressure, like because Queensland, they won for seven or so years. Mm. So, but then you've, you've got the best opportunity that, you know. Yeah, you got that Suncorp win. So it's like, the, here it is, boys. The opportunities are in front of you. And then, then that's added pressure itself. Mm. Not only are you the, the, the halves for New South Wales, that he's probably one of the most scrutinised positions in the, in, yeah. in rugby league. Oh, easy. You know, like Paul Pearce used to cop it for years. Oh, like he used to be a gun, but, yeah. you know, in the Origin Arena, they rip him to shreds. Yeah. And it was bullshit, to be honest. But anyway, okay. but then, then so you, I'm thinking about all this stuff through the week, you know, like uh, I just, that was one thing I probably, just, I just always, you know, I had to always get rid of self doubt, and mm. I learned to deal with that. Yeah, but then yeah, you just like, but then I'd walk into the team room and you got like Luke Lewis there, and you're like, man, we got some guns here too. Absolutely, you know what I mean. So it was it just it was it was a great feeling, mate. I remember the week being a bit training good, but everyone being a bit like edgy, kind of yeah, yeah, edgy. Yeah, edgy's probably the best word for it. Like a few balls down at training, and Oof. you're like, come on, boys, like. Yeah. And but you like, know what's at stake, you know. That's what it was, yeah. honestly, mate. And and I just think everyone knew how close we were, mm. especially that core group of blokes that had yeah. never hadn't hadn't won and mm. got to Sydney, mate. And mm. I just remember that game being a little bit different. Like mm. Queensland were probably a bit more dominant at the start, but then we edged our way back, edged our way back, got in front with about five to go, and then the the scuffles happened. And I just remember, I just had a feeling of I think we've got him. Yeah. Not, yeah. no, I don't even know if we're going to win the game, but I just think mentally we've got them. Yeah. Like I just, you just never see that. Like yeah. you never see it. And mate, we were lo like, I was loving it. Like it was my, like, <laughs> I think, I think John O'Thurston writes about it in his book like that. You know, I, I got under his skin like yeah. that. That's, <laughs> like, that's, what I, that's what I said to him. I said to him, Mrs. One day, I was like, oh, I'm going to be, no, like, I love that. I'm in his book. <laughs> yeah, that's like my proudest moment. <laughs> like, I'm in JT's book. But, <laughs> I got under his skin. Yeah. Like, I mean, I had some, like, mate, but had some, like, crazy battles with him like mm. and the thing was I, I love after that game that i was able to be like mate i 
totally respect you. Yeah, like it's sure. just as soon as I like, I'm just I've lost it. Like, <laughs> and I'm happy to say that, but like, yeah. yeah, had utmost respect for them. But then, mate, yeah, obviously after that, got to celebrate, and man, didn't they? Sydney just put it on for us. Yeah. Like every mate, it was the funnest. I think Rob, Robbie Farrow went out for seven days straight. Wow. So like that's a, a, <laughs> a great effort. Um, but yeah, it's just cool, mate. <laughs> That was like my parade moment, you mm. know, like I didn't <laughs> get to get one for the GFs and stuff. Yep. But um, went to Suncorp and got whacked in game three, but Who cares that's after okay. That. <laughs> yeah, you got the series, you got the series. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, incredible. Uh, we've already spoken a little bit about the, the grand final uh, in 2014. I guess, I think you had a couple of injuries heading into that grand final, didn't you? Yeah. If I remember correctly. Yeah, we did, yeah. And it just didn't seem to be your moment, to be honest. Like outside looking in anyway. Yeah, it was, mate. Yeah. You're exactly right. But you know what? It was it was actually, I th- for some reason, I thought we were going to win that one. Yeah, I okay. just had a, the Melbourne one I did before the game, I was like, it's going to be a toughie. Mm. But I just, because the way it happened, like we finished seventh. Mm. We beat Melbourne in Bel- Melbourne in Melbourne first semi, yeah, which are. is like rare. Yeah, absolutely. You know, like that. And we, and we didn't, but we flogged them mm. 30 to six something. Yeah. And then we beat another good side. I think it was Manly. In the, in, a, in the one before, and they were a gun side, Stuart Brothers. And then we beat Penrith, who were flying. Mm. And then, mate, like, comes grand final day, and I'm like, mate, I'm feeling good because we'd already been there. Mm. We, we'd already been in GF. We knew what we had to do. Yeah. <clears throat> um, but yeah, <laughs> everyone always says, like, I was made for South. I was ringing the bell and that. <laughs> and I was like, I say to people, do you actually think we're in the shed going, Oh, that South Bell spring. <laughs> like, who gives up? <laughs> it's honestly, but like, that's why I love Bulldogs fans. Without, like, they're like, nah, that Bell, that South Bell. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> you can't be serious. You can't think that we're sitting in a shed thinking about a little bell. Oh, like thinking, nah, we got no chance. <laughs> we're done here. Oh, man. It's just, I actually, I love them to death. Oh, that's why I love them because they're like, oh, they'll, they'll find anything. Nah, it's yeah. got to be the Bell. Nah, oh. If we, the Bell wasn't really, we would have won, but. Oh. But yeah, maybe, I don't know if you remember the game. We were in it up into our ears like for for a long time. But yep. then I think one of the Burgess brothers scored a try from nowhere. Mm. And then they just went, try, try, English try, mm. go on, uh, game over. <laughs> the ga- go yeah, on, end Go on, game over. But <laughs> yeah, like made another one. Like I just, yeah. But it really does, mate. Like I might be having a laugh about it now, but it burns me. Like I oh, played in two sure. and lost two. Yeah. Like it kills me. Mm. Like I I don't even know. Like I don't even <clears throat> everyone says you got the rings and stuff. I don't even want to show that. But it's just for something inside me. Like I'm, I'm probably yeah, like you, as a player, you just want to win one. Yeah. Like and sure. people say, But you want origin. But I know winning a, a grand final with the boys, yeah, it, it would be ten times better. Mm. Um so yeah, mate, it I, I I honestly used to have sleepless nights over it, like thinking why didn't you do this? Why didn't you do that? But look, now now I sit back and think about it. I'm, like, I'm okay with it, yeah. but it does be and it burns. You can me. analyse it without you know fully getting worked up about yeah. it. Yeah, just kind of stings. I just, just that constant man. Do you know what, mate? I just would have loved to have been able to bring a trophy home for the for the fans and stuff mm. and all the the community because yeah. I was from there. Yeah, I just think it would have just put like, mate. I'm I'm super happy with my career. Like mm. so. Like not even the way I played, but just everything I got to experience, mates I made, journey. But if I got, it was I was able to do that for the for the era that I grew up, mm. it would have been super special. Yeah. So, I mean, obviously you continue to play at the doggies, but um, would have been what was it, two thousand and seventeen, eighteen that you mm-hmm. went to the Tigers. Yep. So how did that all come about? Because clearly, <coughs> you know, you love the Bulldogs. I'm assuming you would never want to leave, but how did that come about? To leave? Yeah, it was so, mate, it was, yeah, I've said it before, it's the toughest decision in my life. Mm. Um, so it was a bit of a, it was a bit of a weird one, and I still to this day don't know exactly ha- what happened. Mm. Um, but it was a, there was a bit of a, um, how do I say it? It was a bit of a, uh, a battle between, you know, Bulldogs is a big club. Mm. There's always high stakeholders um and there was a there was a bit of a, a battle between who was in charge you know mm. like um so i just remember me being like hearing so many mixed different things from a few different parties yeah and i just didn't know to believe you know 
speak to your manager. I trust him in my whole life. Um, and he was just like, I just don't think it's going to happen. I was like, why, but? Like, what is it? Like, what? I just remember being so emotional, yeah. man. I just remember snapping his head off. Yeah. And, and he was like, mate, what can I do? Yeah. Now I look back and I'm like, he couldn't have done, he couldn't have done nothing because yeah. that's their decision, right? But yeah. I just remember being so hurt by it. Mm. Um, just, yeah, I remember there was a day where he said, look, mate, I think you're going to have to leave. Yeah. And it broke my heart. Yeah. Just, like, shattered me. Because I just wanted to be a one-club man. I always did. And, like, I had a stage there I thought I could have been mm. like everything was going good and realistically though I honestly think because like that tender at the Bulldogs like five or six years like we actually we made the semis every time mm. we made two GFs but I, I actually agree with this we didn't win it mm. but at a big club like that that's still not even good enough mm. and I and I probably learned that as I left, but at that time, I was like, really? Like, man, I'm We're doing well. Yeah, yeah. like, <clears throat> but mate, um, yeah, so, yeah, with that sort of power struggle, I was in the mix of it and I didn't know what to do. And, mm. and obviously, mate, I had an offer from the Tigers, I had an offer from the Sharks, and I had an offer from the Bulldogs. Mm. So that's the one thing, like, as well people i had an offer from the bulldogs so like people like they kicked you out they didn't kick me out like i could have stayed mm. but at the same time like with, with those two offers compared to the bulldogs mum was like not even close yeah it was like embarrassing yeah it was yeah. it was like really like <laughs> you like, may as well not offer anything and just well, said no we don't want you yeah like th that middle thing yeah you know like we talk about that before and i'm just like you know and people question oh well you wanted to be a bulldog for life and i say yeah but it works both ways, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, of yeah. course I would, would, would want it to be. I would have loved to have been. Mm. But at the same time, it's like, you know, that love. Like, you know, someone else, like, they're showing, like, that. that's what they think you're worth. Mm. That's what they think you're worth. And, and then the Bulldogs. So, in the end, mate, rips me, breaks my heart now mm. to, to, to think about it because I just didn't. Like, even now, I don't know, I think about, should I have just taken that? Yeah, just taking the unders and yeah. yeah. But then but then I wouldn't have been able to, you know, have what I've had off the field. Like it's just yeah. life, mate, and it sucks. Mm. And it's a bloody business and I hate it. But yeah, I had to leave, mate. Well, we, uh, we were short on time, but I definitely I want to hear coming back how that all happened. We'll have to get this I mean, there's so many years we've still got to go, so we'll have to <laughs> do a part two eventually. Yeah, yeah. But I wanna hear coming back to the Bulldogs, what it meant, and then running back on that field again. Yeah. Sorry, man, I'm chewing, chewing your ear no, off. No, 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 not at all. You'd probably be like, get this guy out of here. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> nah. He's a busy man. He's yeah. a busy man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but no, mate, honestly, like, the journey where I went from ringing Gus, nagging him to come back. Mate, so how it first started was I just messaged him to come back to the club. Okay, was, as, a, as a coaching role Yeah, or anything, man. Yeah. Like, I always wanted to. Yeah. I always wanted to give back somehow because mm. even though, like, like, we just spoke about it, I didn't have any um, hard feelings towards the club because the people that even, you know, that I might not have been happy with are gone anyway and the club gave me so much. So mm. I just wanted to come back, maybe help out the juniors um, or something like that. But then, um, yeah, it come to a stage where I was in Hull and I was like, yeah, I think I'm done. I'm going to retire. Yeah. But then there was just, I went on a nice Europa trip. <laughs> I had a lot of time to think. And I just was like, you know what? I want to, I want to get one more crack, if I can. Yeah. But only at the dogs. Yeah. I don't want to go anywhere else. So I just remember coming home, um, or Gus saying, yep, let's have a meeting. And I could tell he was like, do you really want him, man? Like, and I remember the meeting was in Brighton the Sands. We were hiding <laughs> um, with, with my manager, George. And um, he just, he was like, mate, love to have you back. But he goes, do you know what, you, you know what you're in for? Mm. And, he's, and he's just like, you haven't played in the NRL in three or so years. And I said, look, mate, like, I know exactly what I'm in for and I know what I want to do. And once I've sort of put my mind to it, mm. there was no, like, if he said no, I would have taken it. But yeah. at the same time, I was like, nah, I, I really want to give this one more crack. And mm. I think, so I spoke to my manager after and he's like, he's only trying to look after you. Yeah. In a sense of he doesn't want you to ruin what you had here. Yeah, for sure. And I... Mate, I respect that. Mm. I didn't see it at the time. Yeah. And I was like, nah, man, like, just tell him to give me a crack, like shaking him. <laughs> but like, yeah, it was, which was nice because like, I suppose I could have, you know, possibly went out there and made a bit of a fool of myself. Like, mm. let's be honest. Yeah. Um, but then, yeah, got to it and 
got in the, the first couple of days of preseason, I was like starting all over again, walking yeah. into the, the room and stuff. Mate, the going, smells, the nostalgia, everything. Oh man, like I hadn't seen the place in a long time, yeah. how much it changed and mate, they've done a great job. Like even just like, I love it. Like they got all the names on the boards and all that. Like yeah. that just giving me like, I know it's a bit of a cliche, but I, for me, it meant so much. I was yeah. on that board yeah. and I was like, you know, I know these young guys are looking up at that and oh mate, first day, like it's same thing. I was like, I'm gonna go after this fitness. Yeah. I know when he was fit. Yeah. Mate, I'd I'd taken a battering from 2017 to 2023. Yeah. In, including like being overseas and just yeah. being back from Europe. So <laughs> anyway, take on the yo yo first day and torture. <laughs> Went nowhere near as good as what I thought. But do you know the crazy thing was people were backing me, like the staff who were there. Yeah. Pretty surround. A few of the people had already been there. And I was like, no, 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 don't do this. Don't put this pressure on me because I'm not the same guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, so go okay. Walk off thinking, yes, I got through it first day. Trav, Trav Tuma comes over and goes, boys, we're going again. Double yo-yo. And I was like, really? <laughs> I'm 34, man, come on. But I, I, he actually tried, but I was like, no, nah, no, nah, I, I want to have a crack. And, yeah. But anyway, man, so then got in and started getting a feel for it and the training and, you know, like, really loved it because I had guys in there. There was guys in there like Karaz, um, Khaled, mm. um, and even like uh, Jordan, a couple of these young guys, massive Bulldog supporters. And yeah. we're going into camps and they're like telling a story. They're telling stories about how they were at the grand final. And Jordan was like, I remember you being on the like bus. We lost, but like throwing your <laughs> shirt off and yeah. like my cousin only got it or something. Like, yeah, yeah. And that's when it hit home that, mate, this is no matter what happens from here on, like, this is so much closure for me. Yeah. Just even being in those little camps and, you know, boys wanting to hear stories about how, you know, like how we used to do stuff and, you know, what how they want me to bring it into this, just culture stuff. And mm. and then, yeah, mate, like eventually got to that day where I reckon it was a bit touch and go. Mm. I remember having a conversation with, um, who was it? Might have been Ciro or it might have been, I'm pretty good with, <laughs> close with Stevie Turner, mm. just saying, look, do you reckon I'm going to get in? Because I was like, because I wasn't in the top 30. Yeah. Um, but then like I, I just remember having a couple of good like sessions mm. um, with the ball and stuff. Like, yeah. and I just was like, I just kept doing it. Anyway, Ciro and Gus come to the middle of Belmore on, on a hot stinking preseason day. And they're like, mate, you're in the top 30. <laughs> and I was just like, holy. Wow. Just like, mate, that like. What a journey all the way. Well, mate. just that journey, just knowing that there's a possibility that I'm going to put on a Bulldogs jersey yeah. again. You know, it was just, I remember I went home and went, well, I was living at mum's at that time and mm. she like, we just had a, we were, we were on the champers <laughs> just for making the top 30. You know what I mean? Like, well, you're um, back when you're 18. You're, yeah, you're 18, legit. You're you know? you're going. Um, but then, mate, yeah, get sort of come through and not, obviously didn't start in first grade um, at the start, but I was actually so okay with that. Yeah. You know, people were like, 18th man again. I'm like, honestly, like, like I don't think he, no, no one really gets it, like, and I and I get that they don't get it. Yeah. But for me, and then there come a time where, as you said before, we were going good at the start. Mm. So I was probably like, you know what, it might not happen that I'm going to play. Mm. Happy to play some Reggie's great crew, young boys. Mm. But then yeah, come to there was a day and there was a few a few out and um, I just remember Ciro saying to me, "You ready or what?" <laughs> and I was like, "No way, <laughs> this is it, man." And mate. Got to, got to play again. Mate, what's that feeling here? Oh. Everyone chanting, you get up, you got your card in your hand. Oh, mate. What's like, honestly, it? like, that's – people ask me, like, when's your favourite career – like, moments in your career? Like, mm. probably top – in the top five, three of them have literally just been been off the bench. And as you just said, like, people, like, chanting. Like, it's – yeah. Boys, like, boys used to G me up. Oh, man, I was like <laughs> – But I, I just like, man, I love it. Like, I was yeah. just like – in that moment, man, like – I just remember like being so shaky and being like, mate, like this is it. Like yeah. you've, you've, you're back. I just remember looking down at the, like the badge and just being like, man, like it's, you can't write that script. Like, and that's why I'm just so happy with, I wasn't, I wasn't finished in Hull. And yeah. that was why I had that scratch, that itch. And I did. And, um, in, mate, in that game, Bert, I kicked the field goal. I don't know if you remember, but I chased him around the field and <laughs> that's the only thing I've done in the game. <laughs> But, um, yeah, got to play eight or so games. Yeah. Um, but the main thing for me is I get to be a part of what they're building now. Yeah, for you sure. You know, like mm. I was in it 
now I'm obviously not but yeah. I can still hopefully have an impact for these young guys and be a, be a voice or be someone that they can come to yeah. um, at the club but I know we're heading in the right direction and I just you know Ciro said some like really kind words in my last game mm. uh, when I said I was going to retire yeah. just made, made me made me tear up in front of everyone because I just I know he knew what it meant to me yeah and just like I just think he understood that me being a part of it this year meant the world to me yeah and I'll be forever grateful for for him and and Glass and the club for you know for giving me that closure yeah it's not not many people get to get oh, to do mate. it man. it's it's it was mate, so super it's incredible special. yeah I would have loved to have just won that Broncos jersey one more time one more just man one more time I just, I just remember saying it to my missus man like a, we were, I think I, I don't know, I even think we we're on a flight Oh, or no, you know what it was? It was, there was, um, there was an art, it was coming out in Fox Sports. I don't know how. Someone said, Oh, Marino might be coming back. Mm. So I'm in Greece or something, like getting all these messages, but nothing had, had been happened yet. Yeah, okay. So then well, I said, So then a few weeks go on, and I just remember being on a plane. I was like, Imagine this happens. Yeah. And she's just like, I don't know, she's pretty nice. She's like, You can do it. You know, like they, yeah, like, absolutely. They, they have to say that. Yeah, they do. <laughs> and I was like, Yeah, it means but, a lot, though. She's uh, a, like your best friend, you know? Oh, mate. Like, honestly, I just remember looking, going like, God, I love you. Thank you. But at the same time, this is going to be a, a, a big journey. But, yeah. mate, yeah. Even now, man, in my stomach, I just feel good. Yeah. I really do. So good, yeah. brother. So good. Uh, we're going to have to do a part two, bro. Because <laughs> I've got a kid I've got to go take care of, and you've got a golf day to get to. I do to. have a golf day. <laughs> um, so apologies for the listeners. We'll, we'll, I mean, if you're okay with it, we'll do a part two because we've still got all the West Tigers. We've got all of England. Um, I'll ask just quickly, favourite rapper of all time? Rapper? Yeah. Uh, Tupac. Favourite movie of all time? Any given Sunday. Oh, yes. Willie Beeman. Steaming Willie Beeman. Very close to the Remember the Titans. Yes. But I love the... The sports movie. I love Denzel. Yeah. Oh, he's the goat for me. Yeah, yeah. He's the goat for me. Mate, as I said, if you're, if you're down for it, we've got to do a part two. Apologies, guys. Uh, my wife has to... She's got an appointment that I have to get home for and I've got to take care of the kids. So That's I've got fine, to man. shoot. I'm on. I'm on. Uh, but King. thanks so much for coming on, brother. I really appreciate it. Thanks for having me, man. Well, Thanks. thank you.